This morning, I just want to say, do you love the Lord? Amen. Are you excited for what God yes. has done for you? Amen. Amen. Yes. You know, we need to be able to praise him and say, God, I'm not asking you for anything, but I just want to say thank you for the things that you've already done. Amen. Amen. We need to be grateful. We need to be grateful sometimes. Even if God never did anything else for us, he's already done more for us. Yeah. Amen. By giving yes. us life and life eternally through what he did. Yeah. As he went to his death, burial, resurrection, and then ascension, amen, of what he has done for us. You know, Jesus wasn't just born. He didn't just die. And furthermore, he's still not in the tomb, amen? He is a risen Savior, and he's alive forevermore. He has the power of the cross now and the power of victory, and that's an ongoing power. I'm here today to tell you it didn't stop. It didn't stop at the hill of Gal Golgotha. It didn't stop at the cross. It didn't stop at the tomb. And it didn't stop when he stepped in hell and he said, hand over the keys. Amen. Right. It didn't stop at any of those points. But you know what? The power of God is an ongoing power. It's a resurrection power. And for now, since he has arisen and now he sits on the right hand of God. We now walk in that resurrection power. Amen. We have that resurrection power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, and it richly dwelleth in you today. Amen? Amen. I can say, as Paul said, if anyone can claim the power and the authority of Christ Jesus, I certainly can. Amen? Amen. I can claim it. Yes. I know of who that I am. Amen? Do you know him this morning? Jesus called Lazarus out of the tomb. Jesus came out of the tomb, and I'm here to proclaim today that no tomb's got a hold on you. Amen? Amen. We need to understand that we've got to come out from the dead and be among the living. Whatever that dead place is in that you've been in, this is a come out Sunday. Amen? God's going to yes. bring you out today. Yes, New is. life, abundant life, resurrection life. And that power is an ongoing power in you and I. You know, you can't bury power. Because it won't stay there. You can't try to bury truth the way the truth and the life. Because the truth will stand. You can't try to bury the Jesus down inside of me. And you can't stop my destiny. But his anointing power upon me cannot be contained. I am crucified with Christ Jesus. I hope you can say this too. So that I no Amen. longer live. But Christ lives within me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. That is the life that I live now in resurrection life. I've experienced the resurrection glory. God's made a way for us again to come out from the dead and into the living. For in him I live and move, I can say, and I have my very being. He's all over me this morning and he's keeping me alive. Amen. Amen. My Jesus Amen. is keeping me alive. He's victorious over the cross, the tomb, death, and the grave. And there is victory in Jesus. I love that song. If I am here today, I just want to really want to bring this message on as victory is even more than that. For through Christ, we can experience every aspect of the victory that Jesus came and he bought for us. Hebrews 4.15 tells us, We do not have a high priest that's not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points was tempted, just like we are, yet without sin. Therefore, that means, in other words, that he can sympathize with our weaknesses. He understands our battles. He knows our pain. And Jesus was fully human, and he walked this earth just as we walk this earth, experiencing much of what we experience, and even more so in the light of the cross. Hebrews 12, 3 gives us an encouraging word saying, Consider him who endured such opposition. It says such hostility. By sinners, consider him so that you, too, do not grow weary and lose heart. Jesus endured it. He endured a hostility and opposition, even though he was perfect. You know what? He did no wrong. That's right. That's right. He did no wrong. That's right. And as we read the gospel story of Jesus as he made the way, his way to the cross, we find that he was treated by others so many times just like we're treated. God's a relational God. He not only wants relationship with us, but he wants to relate to us. Jesus can identify with us in everything that we've ever gone through. 
So today my message is entitled, Great Destinies Attract Great Offense. There's been no greater destiny than the one that rested upon Jesus. You know, we all talk about our destinies. We all get caught up in our destinies. But there's no greater destiny than what was on the shoulders of Jesus. He carried the greatest destiny of all. That was one that we wouldn't be here today, would we? That's Amen. Right. That's right. We wouldn't be. We wouldn't have any promise of life eternal. Amen. That's right. We wouldn't. He wouldn't have conquered death, hell, and the grave and arose again. We wouldn't have that abundant living, but he had the greatest destiny. And so you have to understand that with that, that kind of great destiny, and when you're connected to him as well with your destiny, there's going to be great opposition. Yeah. This was all because his destiny was connected to kingdom business. Kevin and I were all about kingdom business. We're all about doing the will of the Father. And the Word of God says Jesus said the same thing. I am here not to do his own even, not to do anybody else's, but he was going to accomplish the will of his Father. I want you to turn this morning to Mark 14, Mark 14, 27 through 31. I'm going to set it up just a little bit and tell you. As you're looking for it, Mark 14, 27 through 31. That this is where we find Jesus and his disciples after taking the Lord's Supper at the Passover. Jesus now turns and speaks to his disciples as they're journeying towards the Garden of Gethsemane. And so we read it says that Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet not I. And Jesus looked in turn and he looked at him and said, Verily I say unto thee this day, even this night, before the cock crows twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. But Peter, he spake even more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise then said all of the disciples. Here they are. The night that Jesus is going to be betrayed and led away to be beaten, accused, ridiculed, ridiculed and end up dying on a cross. And he tells his disciples, his best friends, has been with him. He's been telling them this whole time. He tells them again. What's going to be happening? And he says, tonight you're going to be offended by me. NIV says that Jesus told them they would fall away from him. You're going to fall away tonight from me. The NLV, the New Living Version, says they would be ashamed of him. Ashamed. Ashamed of him that night. 2 Peter 2.8 says, Now remember, 2 Peter 2.8 says, who's that? Who wrote that? Wait a minute, didn't we just read about Peter? What did he do? What did Jesus say? Oh my goodness, he got it later, didn't he? <laughs> Once you look at this, who wrote this? I just love the word of God. I love to tie things together. 2 Peter, now we find out after all this has happened as Peter's looking back, this is what Peter's now able to preach. This is what he tells us today. 2 Peter 2, 8, he says, Jesus is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them that stumble being disobedient. Jesus is the stone that the builders rejected, but he became the chief cornerstone, amen? A chosen and precious stone, and the one who trusts in him will not be put to shame. We need to understand that the gospel of Christ is offensive. Was that the wrong book that that was in? Was I wrong? Is it in 1 Peter? Yeah. Okay, 1 Peter 2.8. <laughs> but it's still Peter, guys. <laughs> 1 Peter 2.8. So Peter said it, and he got it then. But at that time, guess what? Jesus was offensive. Jesus was offensive to them. And today we need to understand that the gospel of Christ Jesus is an offensive gospel. Remember the message that I preached here in this church about Mary 
Mary anointed Jesus. He, she poured out everything of her life that was in that alabaster box. That was everything saved up. That was her dowry. And she poured everything, Mary did, of her life, even her future. And she went and poured it upon Jesus. And then she fell at his feet, worshiping him. And when she wiped his feet with her hair, she got up and smelled like her Jesus. If we're true worshipers, we will also smell like our Jesus, as 2 Corinthians 2.15 says. I want you to go there real quick. 2 Corinthians 2.15, I want you to see this this morning. A key scripture. What Mary did was offensive. If you remember back when I preached that sermon, here she did all this. She poured everything else. I, uh, a few days, just a few days it says before he's going to go to the cross. He just tells them this. And she pours everything out of herself. And here the disciples are watching this. And were they excited that they run over and kneel down at his feet too? No, they were indignant. They were angry, resentful, it says, and offended. Offended. Messiah was revealed. Mary, in pouring out that oil, it says, the fragrance filled the room. What really happened in that story? Messiah was revealed. Amen. 2 Corinthians 2.15 says, we have become the unmistakable aroma of victory of the anointed one of God, a perfume of life to those being saved, and the odor of death to those that are perishing. The unbelievers, when they smell us, they smell a deadly stench. Oh, they, they can't handle it. They can't handle that because that's not what they know. It's a deadly stench that leads to death. But to believers, we know it's a smell of life-giving aroma, the aroma of the cross, the aroma of a resurrection, resurrected life that comes up that leads to abundant living. And it says, who of us can, can rise to the challenge? For unlike so many, we are not peddlers of God's word who water down the message. We are those sent from God with pure motives who speak in the sight of God from our union in Christ Jesus. You know, that's what we do. We don't water down the word. It's because we're in union with him, that union with Christ Jesus, that we're able to have those kind of pure motives, that we're able to take on the scent of Jesus. It was through that, that time of worship. It's that time spent in your prayer closet. You're going to begin to smell like your Jesus. Friends, we carry an unmistakable, I love that word, unmistakable aroma of the victory of the anointed one to God, Jesus. And while it smells like victory to us and others that's serving God, you know what? It's a stench in the nostrils of those perishing, those that's walking in defeat. They look at us and they can't handle the victory that we're walking in, amen? Right. So they can't right. handle what you're right. walking in. That's right. They don't have the victory. So our victory gives off a smell that's offensive to them. For it's the smell that reveals the Messiah in us. But aren't you thankful, though, that you smell like your Jesus this morning? I'm thankful. That's right. I smell Amen. like my Jesus. I spend time with him. Amen. We are not those who peddles God's word. I'm going to tell you right now, you need to be careful. and Don't distort the word of God, nor corrupt it. Don't use it for personal gain or power. There's a lot of that stuff going on. You know what? When you hear somebody preach something and it hits you right between the eyes, you need to get on your knees right then. Amen? Amen. You don't need to be coming back and saying that's not a, a true word because let me tell you what, you're walking in something you don't want to be walking in. That's right. That's right. We best be careful how we treat the word of God. Just because we don't like it and it hits at a sin that we don't want uncovered doesn't mean we call it a lie. Amen? Amen. We right. need to watch what we do with the word of God. We don't peddle the word of God. We don't distort it. We're not going to corrupt it. We don't water down the message. Amen. I don't water down the messages, right? I say it all the time. I'm pretty blunt. I'm pretty well going to call it out. Because you know what? I want to reveal Messiah. I want it to get down there. I want it to seep down in people's hearts. I want them to realize what they're doing. I want to break off that deception so that they no longer walk under the spirit of kill, still and destroy, but they walk under the, the spirit of life and life more abundantly. I want some abundant living going on. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's right. God says to speak with sincerity, and those that do are sent from God. That right there reveals who's going to have great destiny in God. 
Because that kind of real Christianity, I'm going to tell you right now, is an offense. I offend many. <laughs> I'm very offensive. I have a good smile. I love people. I'm tell you what, I never see anything like it. I mean, I'm just walking in a room and smiling. People get offended. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's why God gave me this message. Because I thought, and Lord, <laughs> not really understanding this. This is really weird to me. Because <laughs> I'm a love bug and I love people. And then I think, well, that's weird. I treated them right. And then... You know, so I'm going to take you there today. I'm going to take you there today on a lot of this. But I'm going to tell you right now what it is. It is a life. It is a life submitted to Christ Jesus. And you're, you're giving off an aroma of victory. Are you hearing yeah. me? Yeah. It shakes people up. I walked in a room. And I'm telling you, I had a, a pastor's wife. I told you this before. But she told me, she says, Melanie, I'm going to tell you what your problem is. I said, okay, tell me. <laughs> she says, she says, they see you and they know what you carry. They can't handle it. You walk in a room and they see, boom, that spirit will pick it up, picks it up, picks it up. It's because it's a life that reveals Messiah, not me. That's right. It's revealing Messiah. It shakes things up. It's going to shake the devil up every time. That's right. It's going to shake up bad spirits every time. Familiar spirits are going to get shook up. Amen. Religious spirits are going to get shook up. It's that kind of being just like Jesus that's just too much for some people. You see, if they turned against Jesus just as his disciples did when it came down to really living it, then when you determine to be sold out for Christ, don't be surprised when they also turn on you. What am I talking about? I'm talking about people taking offense when you step into your anointing. I'm talking about the offense of God being alone on the throne of your life. I'm talking about the offense that comes when you forsake all else. Father, mother, sister, and brother. That kind of picking up your cross and following Jesus kind of a devotion. Yet we need to understand word says that until we do, we cannot be his disciple. That's right. right. Yeah, you cannot amen. be worshiping family. They cannot be on the throne. They are not over your life. Amen? That's right. right. Amen. God and God alone. Amen. You cannot be his disciple unless you're going to do it. Amen. You can't amen. have hindrances. Amen? Yes. Paying that kind of cost and obedience to Christ is going to offend many. But great destinies are all about revealing the Messiah. It's not about anybody else, including us. It's all about a life completely a submission to him and doing the will of the Father. Right. Just as Jesus did. Great destiny is all about the Heavenly Father and his will being done in your life. Lord. You know, I'm determined I'm going to have that unmistakable aroma of victory and smelling just like my Jesus. Even though it will be a stench in the nostrils of the accusers who come against me and those who are walking in defeat. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ Jesus, for it's the gift of God and to salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Amen. I'm not ashamed of my God. Right. you got to have that kind of thinking and that kind of mentality to have great destiny. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, it takes that kind of declaration for God to even be able to position or to use us for great destiny. At the same time, that kind of not being ashamed... I'm going to bring some offense. It's going to offend the religious. It's going to offend those that have a form of godliness, but they're denying that power thereof. It's really about them. It's not really about revealing Messiah. From such, the Word of God says, turn away. 2 Corinthians 3, 5 through 7 says, This is the kind of people who go from house to house. They talk to foolish women. And I, that just really right there, because I'm a woman, I just think, my goodness. We don't need to be foolish women, amen? We don't need to be foolish men either. They talk to foolish women who are loaded down with sins and all kinds of sinful desires. Such women are always listening to new teaching. But they are never able to understand the truth. We know what? None of us need to be a bunch of silly women, amen? Don't need to be silly people. Always looking for the next big spiritual thing in order to look spiritual ourselves. I'm going to tell you right now, you will find no great destiny in that. That's right. They run here. They run there. I have friends. We have some in our family. And I mean, it's all about being spiritual. we got to be spiritual. <laughs> and I'm just amazed by that. I'm just simply amazed by it. Oh, the latest thing that's going on. Oh, they'll run off. Oh, I heard about this thing, big thing happening down in Georgia. And here they'll cart off and they'll come back with their little, their little vials of oil. There's a Bible down there and it's producing oil. And I've got this oil and I've got this oil. And I'm going to hand it to you. And you need to put it on yourself because there's power in this oil. No, there's power in the 
blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I am tired of the devil trying to substitute and counterfeit where the real power is this morning. Amen. Are you hearing me, church? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I love them. I love my friends. I love my friends. But you know what? I go home and I think, Lord, help us. <laughs> Silly women, silly people, always looking for the next spiritual thing, and off they'll go, and off they'll go. That Bible just sitting there and oil doesn't do a blooming thing for anybody. There's my Southern Illinois coming out, blooming. Doesn't do a blooming thing. Until you get that word inside you and you start living it, I don't care how much oil it produces, amen? That oil is not what heals you. Are you listening to me? That's right. Yeah, that's right. That ain't it. It's the oil upon the anointed one when you get in his presence. And that oil, just like with Mary, when it came down and got on her, are you hearing me? It's spending time with your Jesus that produces, that produces the oil. It's not up here even in this little bottle. We, we are called to anoint people, but that's a representation of his anointing. Yes. Amen. We need to get it right, people. It's all trying to get in the way of God. You know, I told a family member once, I told her, I said, you know what? This is what God's telling me for you. You need to get out of the way of him. <gasps> I need to get out of the way. I'm going to tell my friends that you said, I just, I need to get out of the way of God. I mean, she was already turning it into something spiritual again. And I just thought, what you need to do is humble and repent. Okay, let's just get real. <laughs> Because I can hear that. She just said, I just need to get, I'm getting out of the way of my Jesus from now on and bragging about it. No. No. We're talking about getting out of the way by getting your heart right so that Messiah is revealed. In other words, die to yourself, honey. Amen. We need to die to ourselves and get out of his way. We are blocking the glory of God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you what. I will not block his glory, but I'm a glory carrier. Amen. We need to carry his glory. It's Jesus within us. That's the aroma that we're going to give off. And again, to those that's doing this other stuff, it's going to be offensive. Because they're the counterfeit to the real. They're the fake it till you make it. Instead of faithing it until we make it. Amen. These are the type. They're never going to walk in great destiny. Never will. Never will because they're in, they are in the way of Jesus working in their lives. What so many of them try to do is say, oh, you can have your Jesus, but you got to do what we tell you to do. Well, as long as you don't go on deeper in your faith than where we are, as long as you're being real doesn't show us as fake. They don't want you too righteous, too holy, too godly, or too peculiar. And by the way, my middle name's weird, according to Nathan, when he was about four years old. Mommy, I know your middle name. I said, you do? Yep. I said, what is it, Nathan? I thought, well, he don't even know my first name, but Mommy. He says, weird. <laughs> Big smile, dimples, I mean, bright, shining, weird. I said, you're right. That is it, Nathan. I said, that's actually scriptural. <laughs> even my son knew I was peculiar. My middle name was Mommy. It was Mommy Weird. That was my name. Amen. See, you know what? You got to be Mommy Weird. You got to stand you can't be like the rest. Praise God, I'm called to be a standout and not a fit in. I'm not under somebody's feet because I'm not the head. I'm the head and I'm not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. Amen? Amen. And the glory of God that shines on my face is a living testimony to the God I serve and of whose I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I've been told Thank my you. entire life that I shine the light of Jesus in my face and in my smile. And it's true. I do. There it is. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and you can too. <laughs> if you get in the presence in that secret place with God, we take upon him our identity. You've got to learn to get in the middle of his glory. Again, to be that glory carrier. And guess what? Just like Moses coming down off Mount Sinai, guess what? It's going to show on your face. Yeah, that's right. People's going to take one look and they're going to yes. say, Amen. I see Jesus in you. That's when you know you got great destiny because you found where it's really at. Real great destiny is found only in the presence of Jesus. 
That's where it's found. If you don't go there, if you think it's in anything else, you'll never be able to walk out great destiny. Right, right. That's where it's at. You know, God opened the door for me to be on TCT television, TCT network up here. Kim and I got to come up here last year. And we were on, we, we had uh, three shows. We came for two. They went ahead and said, hey, we got time to do one more. And they said, Kevin, would you like to be on there as well? And, and you know what? It was just a God thing. The whole thing lined up. That was just, I praised the Lord. That was nothing of me. Um, I had no idea. I got a call out of the blue about it, asking us to come in our Dare to Believe ministry and get to talk about Jesus. And, and I was so touched. Um, and so you said that you watched some of the, the um, tapings and everything that was on there. And, you know, I was so touched at one point that those ladies sitting there like, looked over at me and they, they said, oh, let, you know, we just want to say about you, Melanie, that, you know, the light of Jesus just shines off your face. Amen. I was so touched and humbled Amen. by them saying that. You know, again, that's affirmation. God's going to send those ones. He will send those ones. It won't be the religious, right? It won't be those that's offended. It won't be the ones that like the Jesus in you. But God will still send those ones to tell you who you are in yeah. him. Yeah. And, and that I thought, man, they don't even know what it meant to me. I needed that at that time. And you know what? I was so touched and I was so excited about that. and just went home on just a spiritual high in the Lord, thanking him and praising him. But you know, not long afterwards, jealousy showed up through a family member. They couldn't stand that being said of me. Bitter envy. Bitter envy is the root, James says, of every evil work. Mm -hmm. They couldn't stand that because really what they saw and what they heard is was who I really am, and they know it. But bitter envy then rose up in their spirit. Bitter envy will happen when God is going to take you where others are not going to. Offense happens when God takes you to a higher level of service in Him and friends when you really are all about Him. And you know, it's sad to say, but it makes those that's offended do these kind of things. I mean, really, it just makes them look bad. Isn't that sad? I mean, it's just a sad thing. Sure. And I thought, well, you know, how, how very sad for that, for that to happen. And they just show their own hearts. It just shows who they are. Yeah. Um, you know, what we did on there was what? We shared our testimonies of what God has done for us and who we are in Him. And what we did again, those three tapings, we revealed Messiah. Amen. We revealed yeah. everything God's ever done in our lives. And all that was shared to millions of people around the world, the gospel that day. And of what God did through two people right here, right here that's even here in this church. Guess what? It went around the world. Who knew that God had such a great destiny in store for a little girl kneeling at an altar in this church 45 years ago? Amen. When I was eight years old, you see there was great destiny yep. coming down the line. Amen. That's right. 45 years ago, right here in this church, is where I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit Amen. at the age of eight years old. Having no idea that one day, all these years down the road, that I'd be going up that road up there to Marion, and God would put me on TV before millions, revealing Messiah. Amen? Amen. I'm going to tell you today, can't God do it? <laughs> can't my God do it? Amen? Great destiny. Great destiny. And great destiny, again, you've got to understand. You can't let it shake you. That's what I'm here to tell you about. Because you've under, you got to understand it's going to attract great offense. Psalm 119, 165 says, Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Well, when people get offended, you know where they're standing with God. Amen? Great peace have they that love thy law. Nothing's going to offend them then. Those who love God's word and practice it, keeping his commandments, doing his will for their lives, are not going to be offended by anybody else walking out their destiny. They would be busy walking out their own. But those in sin will always find offense in God's chosen, anointed, and appointed representatives doing what God has called them to do. And that it is, again, that we live that life revealing Messiah. The second point, first point, is going to bring great offense. And with that... And underneath that heading is great destinies also do not fit into someone else's plans. Great destinies are not going to fit into anybody else's plans. Amen. 
Jesus was offensive. His going to the cross was offensive. And what they were offended at was the fact that he didn't do as they thought he ought to do. We find in Matthew 16 that Jesus tells his disciples he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And then on the third day, he would be raised. And Peter, and here we go again, and Peter <laughs> took him aside and rebuked Jesus, saying, no, not so, Lord. This will, this will never happen to you. Listen to these words. What's, the, what's of Satan in this, okay? This will never happen to you. But Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, for you're a hindrance to me. Right. Your mind is on not on the things of God, but the things of yourself. Right. It's on man. Yeah. What was it he said? He said, this will never happen to you. That was inspired by the enemy, yeah. by the devil. That prophecy was not going to be fulfilled. You see, again, what people want to do, they want to stop Messiah from being revealed. Amen. That's what they want he didn't understand that. But you see, he was all caught up in himself. See, Jesus calls it right out as it is. He says, huh, you know what? He says, you're of Satan. You're a hindrance to me. Your mind is not on the things of God. It's not on the will of the Father. It's not what I'm called on. You don't even get it, but it's all about yourself. Yeah. Peter and the other disciples had a wrong perception and perspective of what they believed Jesus was going to do. They believed he was going to set up an earthly kingdom, and they believed they'd be in on it. <laughs> his understanding of Jesus' great destiny was limited to his own selfish ambitions and of what he wanted to get out of his relationship with Jesus. He even believed he had a right to rebuke Jesus. But again, that's another attempt to stop the Messiah and for prophecy being revealed. This was an attack against the advancement of, king, of the kingdom of God. And Jesus saw Satan at work in his life and he called him a hindrance. You know, there's going to be those that when you step into your destiny... That they want to do an unholy positioning of themselves between you and what God's got for you as well. They can see the great in you. They see the Messiah being revealed in you, just like my friend Tony. They can see it, Melanie, when you walk in. They see it at kingdom advancement then begin to be given to you, and they want in on it. The glory of God that's placed upon me is a glory that others want to be in on but without paying the price that I've had to pay. They want to get on the glory of great destiny, but theirs is a self-glory, which can only hinder God's glory from further manifesting in your life. In this story, Peter, we find out just not too long afterwards, guess what he did? He did deny Jesus then. Remember what he said? I'll never deny you. I'll die with you. But when Jesus was about kingdom business, Peter was confused. Jesus wasn't doing what he wanted him to do. And so what did he do then? He rejected him and he abandoned him. He was offended at what Jesus came to do. Great destinies don't fit into somebody else's plans. People see God taking you on a path to something amazing, and all they can see is how your position can position them. Amen, Pastor? Right. How many times do we yeah, see that? Exactly. They're takers who went in on the fun and excitement. You know, I had some friends, and uh, years ago, I had one come with me to a couple of women's conferences, and then Kevin really stepped more into ministry, so him and I were just going, and she got offended. She put it right on my Facebook page, too. She said, well, some people say that they're my friends. And I thought we were going to do ministry together. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I thought we were going to do ministry together. And I was going to get to travel with you. And we were going to eat out. And we were going to go shopping. Wow. <laughs> See, it's a free ride, baby. Just come along with me. That's what she thought she was going to get. She's going to get all the fun. But I thought, well, my goodness, are you going to spend times on your knees in the days of fasting that I need you to do with me at home first? You 
see? Amen. There's some that all they want to do is ride along on the fun and excitement of where God's taken you. They don't see what you've done for the preparation time. They haven't seen how much you've had to pour out. They haven't seen how much it's cost you of your oil. And then guess what? Even if you brought them along, the moment it gets tough, the moment you stop catering to them, the moment they don't get what they want out of you, they'll also deny, reject, and abandon you. Galatians 1.10 says we cannot be people pleasers. Melanie is not called to please people, okay? Everybody write that down. And get that written down. I will not please you. <laughs> it's no fact. <laughs> I'm not a people pleaser. It's not what I'm called to do. And that word of God says you cannot be a people pleaser. You cannot and be a servant of Christ. Well, guess what? I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve Christ. I'm going to be a servant of Christ. So, no, I'm sorry. Amen. Sorry. Uh, no, you can't have a hold on me. You know, I don't have time for those hindrances. Amen. What God has for me is for me alone. And I love you with the love of Jesus, but I'm on a mission. And that mission isn't about family drama. I don't have time for that. If you think you're going to be with me, then you can't say that you're for me and then be against me. You can't make me feel I'm wrong and in sin because I won't give you an unholy respect that you wish to demand of me. Because you know what? I don't do idolatry. <laughs> I'm staying true to my anointing, and that changes the way I qualify who goes with me. Amen? Amen. There's nobody else over me. I don't have time for that. I don't have time to cater to people that just want to come along for all the fun and games. It's not that I don't mind somebody coming with me every once in a while, but when you start saying those things to me and when you start telling me that you owe me, you're out of the picture, amen? I ain't got time for that thing. I'm not a people pleaser. You see, I want to see where their hearts are at. Are they coming because they really are wanting in on, on their part of what they're seeing God, God do and the glory of Messiah being revealed and they want to be mentored and come up to that level with me? Or are they just about what they can get and what they're going to demand and I have to cater to them and we have to do this and, and they don't want me to be at the altar too long because they want to go eat and they want to go shop and I ain't got time for that, amen? Amen. I'm about That's my right. father's business. That's right, yeah. Amen. Staying true to your calling means sometimes God's got to cut people off of you. That's right. Yep. Those hindrances got to go. You got to know what God told you to do, and he wouldn't put this dream down in my spirit and then abandon it. Family can't come along who are out for their own glory. Friends can't ride along on my coattails for free when I pay the cost of my oil because I'm going to tell you right now, all they're going to do is drag me down. Amen? It's just going to drag you down. Right. Sure. People get offended that God's taking you somewhere that they can't go. You got to understand, just like Peter, they're thinking only about themselves, minding earthly things rather than the things of God. I'm all about God. My life is totally devoted to Him. My mind is set on Him. That's what I do. That's what my ministry is about. That's what my marriage is built on. That's who I talk about. That's who I believe in. And that's just the bottom line with me. Amen. Amen. It's all about Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. I got a witness in the house. Anybody else going to say it's the same for you? Amen. 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 The true gospel is offensive. And that's the offense of it. It's of God. It's of nothing to do with selfish motives and agendas. Those that serve God and God alone, I'm going to tell you one more time, you're going to have many people offended at you. The last point I want to hit on is that, that great destiny, about great destiny, is the greater the destiny, the more enemies you will have. The greater the destiny, the more enemies you will have. If the enemy can't stop your destiny through one individual, then he's going to align as many as possible against you in order to hinder you and halt your destiny. And I'm going to tell you again, the greater your destiny, the more <laughs> it's going to attack you. They're going to come together. Enemies that hate each other, they'll align to come together against you. We find this in Luke 23, so I don't want you to be surprised by this. You got one accuser, and then they go, and you have gossip spreads, and next thing you know, they're accusing you of doing all this wrong, and you haven't even done anything. You're just like Jesus. You're about the Father's business, but they don't like it. Because they're offended at the Messiah being revealed in you. So then enemies will come together. Luke 23, again, here we are going towards the cross. And Jesus, at this point, he stood before Pilate. Pilate, who said, who looked at him and said, I can find no wrong in him. See, there was nothing he had done wrong. What did Pilate do, though? He sent him to King Herod, who was his enemy. 
Now, King Herod had heard many things about Jesus and wanted to see Jesus perform a miracle himself. But as King Herod's demands were not met, even as Herod questioned Jesus with many questions, Scripture says Jesus wouldn't answer him. You know what? Even if he had done a miracle, Herod would have made it about himself. He would have took all the glory. you got to understand, he was a very wicked, wicked king. So then when Jesus wouldn't even answer him, you know what? He didn't even give him the time of day, did he? Then Herod, with his men of war, treated Jesus with contempt. They accused him. They mocked him. They made a spectacle of him, trying to humiliate him by placing a royal robe. He calls himself the king of kings. By placing a royal robe upon him, and then he sent Jesus back to Pilate. And I want you to look at Luke 23, 12. It says, that day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. That's called an unholy alliance. That's right. An unholy alliance. Kevin and I have witnessed this very thing. I'm going to tell you this morning. You know, we've talked a lot about family and issues that's gone on in our families. But I'm going to tell you, Kevin and I have been witness to people who's hated each other for years come together in an unholy alliance like spirits full of bitterness, resentment, joining forces to try to stop what God wanted to do in breaking off ancestral curses in our families and of dealing with sin. Preach it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Unholy alliance coming together. Or they're all going to gang up on you now. Yep. Or they're going to show you she just loves her little Jesus. <laughs> Well, you know what? That's not a put down to me. You just told your God what he is for you. He's a little Jesus in your eyes. Amen. But I know that I serve a big God. Hallelujah. I serve a risen king. I know who my Jesus is. And that is who I am of. That is my life is plugged into him. And I don't have any shame in it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You. Can you even imagine somebody saying that? Wasn't put down to me. Mocking the Lord. Woo! Wow. Amazing. There are those with an exaggerated sense of entitlement demanding a respect that is nothing but a demand for domination and control. Kevin and I have gone through this. You're going to respect us. Uh, well, no, not when that means kissing your fanny. Amen. There's some krill critter talk coming out of me. <laughs> Melanie doesn't kiss fannies. All right. Ain't going to happen. Don't pull down your pants before me because all you'll get is a spanking. Amen? That's some crow critter talk, too. I'm going to put up with that. I call it out. I told you I call it out like it is. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes you just really need to get down to that. That's just not, that's being a baby. That is, that's just baby stuff. That's, that's having the, the milk bottle still in your mouth. It's time to get into the meat of the word. Amen? It's time to grow up a little. Amen? Right. Yeah. My life's not about yours. It's about Jesus. It's about him. And I do serve a big God. Amen. Yeah. Demanding respect. That's nothing but a demand for domination. We're over you. You will do as we say. You will say what we say. You won't talk to me like that. You won't talk about sin in this family. Well, because we're not going to get rid of our sins. We don't want the refiner's fire to come to the Kohler and Thompson family. Woo! Oh, we're not about the refiner who God says the refiner, if we don't go through that refining process, he can't use us. We're useless for the kingdom. Amen? Right. We, we don't want we just want to know that, that God is at our beck and call, and we're spiritual. Amen? I hope that's not how families are. Amen? And when families are that way, they need to get a healthy dose of the fear of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Going to have to wake them up. There needs to be a resurrection. There needs to be a resurrection out of the games that we're playing in families. Amen? Yeah. Truth is, they have no respect for God, nor for anybody else serving God rather than serving them. King David's enemies also aligned. And this is what he said to them in Psalm 94, 21 through 23. They gathered together against the life of the righteous and condemned innocent blood. Just serving the Lord. Yep. Doing what you're called to do. Keeping your marriage strong. Not allowing any hindrances. Is not putting up with the devil. Sitting down Jezebel's spirits. 
Guess what? You're doing what you're called to do. And he says, but the Lord has been my defense and my rock, the God of my refuge, and he has brought on them their own iniquity, and he will cut them off in their wickedness. The Lord our God will cut them off. You know what? Kevin and I, we've never had to cut off family. God cut them off. He just cut them right off. He will cut them right off of your life so that you can go forward when you've got your eyes on him and you're going to do what you know you're supposed to do. Kevin protecting his wife and standing up for his marriage? Well, duh. I should think so. It gets a little weird when mommy and daddy want in the bed with you. Amen? That's a little <laughs> sick, isn't it? That's just a little sick. Let me tell you what. You stay out of the marriage of your kids. Amen? I'm telling you, Mama, you get out of the marriage. Amen? I'm telling you, Dad, get out of the marriage. Amen? That's right. You're not in the marriage bed. That's right. Quit doing gossip. Quit calling one and saying what the other said and stirring it all up all the time because you're trying to be God instead of God being God over their lives, and you're causing a mess. You're causing some drama, and you need to step yourself out, and you need to zip the lip. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Right. That's right. Zip it. Zip it good. Zip it up. Oh, we're getting real now. Because <laughs> I'm telling you this morning, it's critical. This is critical. Just as the Word of God said, those that come against God's anointed, they're going to reap of their own sins. They're playing these games. You're doing this stuff. And then you wonder why the family's a big fat mess. Well, duh, again. <laughs> We've got to come back that God is on the throne do what's right. Do what's right. What reveals Messiah in your marriage? What reveals Messiah in your family? you got to determine, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have life abundant in my family. Amen? Amen. I'm going to have life in abundance in my marriage. Amen? Amen? If we want it or not, we want death. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Who are you going to serve? Yourself? Are you going to serve God? I'm going to serve God. And I want today to see a show of hands who's going to serve him. Amen. I mean, I'm yeah. serious right now. You're going to serve him. Right. Every hand. Every hand. Amen. 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 Guess what? God yeah. says he will break upon them their own sins and he's going to cut them off. And as I'm closing today, I just want to have a Kathy and, and a ready to come back up. My serving God over anybody else, including even members of my own family, is not up for debate. Amen. I won't right. be a traitor to my Jesus for you. I won't be a traitor to my Jesus for you. Those coming against you know that if you ever were to break off and break out from them, that you would walk in the full manifestation of who God called you to be. They see it. You may not see it. I said those coming against you know that if you were ever to break off, if I was ever to break off and break out from them, I would walk in the full manifestation of what God's called me to be. I'd walk in that great destiny. Oh, how the devil would have loved, even family members loved, to have stopped what God had for me of even being on TCT. But you know what? You can't stop what God, when they're, I'm telling you, once you get going in the Lord, your eyes are on him, and all I do is manifest Jesus. Satan himself tried to stop that. Peter tried to stop that. Man's going to try to stop that. But you know what? Jesus will be revealed as Messiah today. Amen? Amen. It's Hallelujah. Easter morning. It's resurrection morning, and Jesus is alive. I'm here to tell you he's alive in me today. Amen? Is he alive in you today? We're not going to allow anybody to try to put him back in the grave. I'm not going to go back in some grave. I'm not going to go sit in some chair and look like a dead person. I ain't going out of this world looking like that. Nobody's going to do that to me. Nobody's going to hinder me. Nobody's going to stop me because I'm going to do what my Father has called me to do. Amen. This message this morning is for someone who needs to hear that you need no one else to validate you for your anointing. God does that. God does that. Not everyone's going to be for you, and you need to let that be proof to you that you're going to have to shake those hindrances off. Just think, Jesus had 
to shake them off, really, because they didn't really believe. You understand what I'm saying? They couldn't go with him. They were going to hinder him the whole way because they didn't get it. They already tried and tried. You see, he had to be cut off from them so that he could go forward. Jesus knows today, I'm going to tell you right now, he knows today what it feels like to be betrayed, denied, rejected, and isolated as he went all alone into his great destiny. I want you to know today that if you feel all alone and isolated, you're in a good place. That's right, I'm going to tell you right now. You're in a good place. You know what, Kevin and I have been hurt. We've had people abandon us. They've come against us. They've said every manner of evil, everything of the accuser that they could possibly say because we were breaking out from them and doing what God was telling us to do. They couldn't go along with us. Yes, it hurt. Yes, it was painful. Yes, it shocked us. We couldn't believe it. We just couldn't believe the things that they've done. And yet, God has revealed to us how many times through all these sermons, all these messages, you all have heard them. I've come up here and preached all of these. They've all been about what I've told you every time. This is what my life is, and this is, this is my ministry. I will tell you again, the thread to every one of my sermons, every one of them. Who's your king? Fragrance of worth that I've preached. Who's on the throne? Every one of my sermons, this is just me, that God's given me. There's a thread every, in every one of them of who God is and who we are in Christ Jesus, every one of them. That's what I'm all about. Doesn't matter what I preach on. Isn't it amazing, Kevin? Even this, I told him this morning on the way to church, I said, guess what it is again this morning? It's about Messiah being revealed. <laughs> I'm going to talk about offense, but guess what it really is? It's about Messiah. One, once again, that's all I'm about. It's in every one of my sermons. And therefore, when we understand who our God is, we'll finally get it of who we are. And that it doesn't matter what anybody else says. I don't care what they say anymore. I don't. I mean, I'm like, whatever. You know, I feel sorry for you, whatever. But you know what? I got my eyes on Jesus. It's me and him. That's all that matters to me anymore. I know he's going to take me somewhere because, again, he's told me, Melanie, here's the key. Great destiny. Great destiny cannot allow hindrances. Great destiny will only reveal Messiah. Amen. Do you receive that this morning? Amen. Is that you? Will you make a commitment? That's your life from now on. That's your life from now on. It's not about anybody else. It's not about yourself. We're going to reveal Messiah. Are you willing to be counted worthy of him? I want you just to close your eyes this morning for a moment. Are you willing to suffer offending those that can't go with you to where God's taking you? The word of the Lord says a man's enemies will be members of his own household. Yet he that loves father or mother more than me are not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their own cross is not worthy of me. And even if all else forsake you, are you willing to forsake all? All of them. Anyone else. And follow Jesus. Has your dreams been on hold because you've been fearful of what others think about you? They put some kind of false guilt on you as God's been trying to take you away. You know what? You need to put that thing under the blood of Jesus this morning. There's no false guilt in that thing. <laughs> That's just the enemy speaking to you. God wants you free today to serve him and him alone. Your destiny can only be stopped by what you allow. you got to say today, I'm not going to allow it anymore. I don't allow their words. I don't allow their attacks. You know what? They answer to God for all that stuff. And you know what? It doesn't touch my life. I'm telling you the truth. It cannot stop you. It hasn't stopped me. I'm still here today. I'm still here today. I'm here right now preaching it. I'm going to tell you, it's never going to stop me never going to stop me. you got to determine that's the same for you today. You're going to be a glory carrier. I wish I had some people in this place to understand that God's gone ahead of you. God, you pulled people out of my life that would have killed me if they'd stayed with me. God, you did that. It wasn't an argument, but it was an anointing from you to separate us that I could move forward in the direction of my destiny. 
Friends, great destiny attracts great offense. 